sisters, I salute all of you and I sincerely admire your initiative to hold an international congress, the voice of rural women in the world. I would like to especially thank Mrs. Carmen Quintania for her efforts in this regard. What you are examining in your discussions on women's problem in every Western country is of course different from the difficulties women face in Iran and other countries in the Middle East. But oppression and discrimination against women are universal and only change in forms and level. From Africa and Asia to Europe and the United States, women's pains are common. What has been added uh, to the things we all share in common is the attack of fundamentalism on the lives of women and all humanity. Although this reactionary force is creating disorder mostly in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, its negative effects target women's achievements in the world over. Therefore, it is not only the enemy of Muslim women, but also the enemy of all women and humanity. Confrontation of the ruling fundamentalist regime with women in Iran is an important aspect uh, in the history of women's universal struggle for freedom and equality. The amazing extent of this confrontation can be seen in the torture and execution of tens of thousands of Iranian women, which is unique in our times. For example, uh, this regime has systematically denied women's civil, individual, and social rights. Humiliating, arresting, and whipping women to forced veiling is part of the regime's laws. Women are deprived of most public rights and freedoms, even from watching matches in studium and from singing. They are systematically dismissed from social activities. Mullahs interfere in all aspects of women's lives to suppress them even further. Fundamentalists see women as their most important social threat because they seek and demand freedom and equality. Women's demands and their determination pose the most dangerous threat to the fundamentalists. This is why the religious fascism ruling Iran has set a world record in the killing of female political activists. Despite such tragic suppression, Iranian women are proud that they have never submitted to this regime, but have proven their competence. Uh, the 1,000 women uh, who have pioneered the Iranian resistance in the most difficult conditions of the past uh, 12 years in Ashraf and Liberty are the promise of future freedom and liberation for women in Iran and the region. Resistance members have been repeatedly attacked and massacred. 117 of them have lost their lives in the killings. Uh, 1,400 have been injured. Uh, 24 have died as a result of an inhuman medical blockade. Seven residents, including six women, have been taken hostage. Uh, despite these repressive measures and the criminal uh, blockade, which has continued for seven years, these pioneering women have clearly uh, demonstrated their competence in directing and leading the resistance and in managing a social order based on equality. Uh, they have uh, thus inspired the struggle of women and youth in Iran. 
Today, the Iranian regime as the epicenter of Islamic fundamentalism is the principal threat, not only for women in Iran, but for global peace and security. Thus, the world community must adopt a firm policy on Iran. Last week, in the nuclear negotiations, the Iranian regime, uh, fearful of explosive state of Iranian society, was forced to retreat one more step. But I must say, a statement of uh, generalities without official approval of the regime's supreme leader does not block the path to a nuclear bomb. To guarantee peace, it is important to implement UN Security Council resolutions. I would like to use this opportunity to call on you, my dear sisters and all participants in this Congress, to actively support the women of Iranian resistance. I call on you to join the great front of women against fundamentalism and play your role in the struggle against this reactionary force that is endangering the entire world. I thank you all.